As the world chases after shifting ideals and evolving moralities, my next guest has proposed a different way. In his new book, The Unbroken Thread, op-ed editor at the New York Post, Sora Bamari, makes a forceful and moving case for the ethical and religious traditions that created civilization through the lives of the men and women who exemplify them. Sorab, welcome to the program. Uh, I, I love you're sitting on my set. That's pretty good. I'm stuck here in New Orleans, and you're there. Now, I know this book was very personal to you. Uh, you wrote it for your son, Maximilian, as a way to pass along an inheritance. What is that inheritance, and why take this approach? Well, my Max is named after St. Maximilian Kolbe. Uh, Raymond, I know you know his story uh, very mm -hmm. well, the, the Franciscan friar who laid down his life for a stranger at Auschwitz and was canonized as a martyr in 1982. Um, so when I heard that story, I was just about to be received into the church, and it really stuck with me, and I couldn't get it out of my system, and I had to do something with it, so I named my son after him. But I felt that naming him after that great saint and the ideal of true freedom that his action mm -hmm. represented is not enough. I had to do something more because we have a, a culture that constantly tells people that freedom just means being able to choose from the widest range of options and just gratifying yourself. And it actually makes mm -hmm. it very hard for ordinary people to just live decent lives of virtue, let alone do those kinds of heroic things that, uh, for example, St. Maximilian did. So the book is my attempt, in a way, to tether my son to his namesake's traditional ideals and to lasso mm. him, as it were, to the whole kind of Judeo-Christian and classical foundation of the West so that he grows up with a, a, a richer and truer account, account of what it means to be fully human, what it means to be responsible. And that mm. collection of things I call tradition. Mm. Yeah, and you, you asked 12 questions in the course of the book. Uh, questions like, can you be spiritual without being religious? Uh, now, about a quarter of Americans identify as spiritual but not religious, according to a Pew poll a couple of years ago. How important is it to identify one's life with a particular faith for the sake of society? I mean, responding to this question, I know you explore the life of Victor Turner in the book. Tell us who he is and what he taught you. So Victor Turner and his uh, wife, Edith Turner, were a pair of anthropologists, British anthropologists. They were mm -hmm. militantly atheistic communists, and card-carrying communists, but um, they were interested in how religious ritual helps traditional societies um, structure their lives. So for example, in the West, in the modern West, the passage to adulthood just sort of happens imperceptibly. It, they bleed into each other, whereas all traditional societies have some sort of rite of passage. So they went to central South Africa, to Zambia, and lived with a tribe called the Ndembu uh, for two and a half years, observing their rituals. And what they noticed is that their rituals do all sorts of things that are good for the community. They help um, by enacting certain rituals, for example, they help people get along who otherwise would be at each other's throats. Or they remind the chieftain that ultimately his role is to serve the people, not just to wield power for its own sake. And mm -hmm. then when they came back to Britain, they felt this great longing for that kind of what he called transcendence that he found in African ritual. And they tried out a whole bunch of churches, but they felt that the most ritualistic religion of all was the Catholic Church, so that they had abandoned their, their atheism and they became Roman Catholics as a result of that experience. Mm -hmm. And what that teaches us in a larger way is the problem with being spiritual but not religious isn't that these people don't have religiosity. These kinds of Americans, they actually, they do all sorts of religious things. They go to spinning and yoga and, and drink juices on Fridays and what have you. So they do religious things. What they lack is a shared account of ultimate meaning. And that's what makes true yeah. religion, is not just the ritual, but relig ritual combined with a shared account of what, what life is all about. And all traditional societies have some aspect of that. And I don't think you can yeah. have spirituality without religion. No, it's the old Fulton Sheen line, you know, when the church drops something, where people drop the church, the secular world picks it up. So, you know, you don't go to mass, but you hit the yoga mat, you know, every Sunday. Uh, in The Unbroken Thread, you write about the famous 1978 commencement address given by Russian writer Alexander Solzhenitsyn and uh, his view of the West. He said of intellectuals, 
your scholars, he charged, are free in a legal sense, but they're hemmed in by the idols of the prevailing fad. There is no open violence as in the East. However, a selection dictated by fashion and the need to accommodate mass standards frequently prevents the most independently minded persons from contributing to public life and gives rise to dangerous herd instincts. Should I be asked whether I would propose the West, such as it is today, as a model to my country today, I would frankly have to answer negatively. No, I could not recommend your society as an ideal for the transformation of ours. What was the reaction to this Soviet dissident's appraisal of American intellectual life? And given what we're seeing in school curricula today and the academy, it's hard to argue with uh, his argument there. Ab absolutely, Raymond. So he was what we would now say he was canceled. He was he was ratioed, which is what happens on Twitter, where someone uh, expresses an opinion that goes against the orthodoxy, and everyone uh, uh, you know assails him or her and mocks him and sort of drums him out of the public square unless he or she issues a kind of public apology. So he since then, which it was very hard to see in 1978, which is why he got attacked so viciously by the mainstream media. And even some many conservative thinkers and writers basically said he's a kook, he's a reactionary, he's a theocrat, mm -hmm. he's an authoritarian. But he diagnosed something very well, which is that in the West, unfortunately, something had gone wrong with the idea of freedom where it had been reduced to just the kind of bare legalism and the right of private actors to do whatever they wish. In practice, that made it so that a lot of the media were controlled by private corporations. A lot of the ac ac academy was taken over by uh, 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 you know, conformist ideologues. And so although he, they, everyone had paper liberty, in fact, a, a kind of conformism prevailed across the West. And that dynamic, I would argue, has only accelerated since then. You see what happens with um, uh, censorship on the Internet, even though we were technically uh, supposed to have uh, freedom of speech rights. As you know, I work for the New York Post, and we recently gone, went through this experience where we exercised one of our most fundamental rights, which is to examine you know, Hunter Biden and his then uh, vice president, his father, then vice president Joe Biden, and their dealings with foreign companies, and um, big tech censored us um, outright and suspended our, our account, even though the story itself is undisputed to this day. So there is a kind of tendency toward tyrannism and tyranny in the West itself that we have to be alert to, and I think it's gotten worse since um, uh, Solzhenitsyn issued his Jeremiah. Saurabh Amari, we will leave it there. I, we're definitely going to have you back. I particularly love the letter to your son and to all our sons at the end of the book, but for that, you'll have to read The Unbroken Thread. Thanks for being here tonight. The book is available at bookstores everywhere. The Unbroken Thread, Discovering the Wisdom of Tradition in an Age of Chaos by Saurabh Amari. Go get it. Well, thank you very much for having me.